everyone there's a new technique for getting beautiful uis when you're vibe coding so in this video i'm going to vibe code an app here with emergent they're sponsoring the channel but before you do that i think a great tip is find a beautiful design that you like i've seen some people find it on dribble or uh, google images or actually maybe some of your previous projects so here i have the remote dev project from one of my courses i really like the design so why not reuse it so as long as you have some kind of screenshot or image let me take a screenshot here. So I'm just going to take um, a screenshot of this page here, and then you're going to give it to an LLM so that it can uh, create a description of it, right? So now I have that image. I'm giving it here to ChatGPT. I can say, please give me a JSON C description with some core instructions on how to build it out. I'm using JSON C here. So this basically means JSON with comments because by default JSON only has actual data here. It does not have comments, but if you have comments in there, the description that you get of that design is even better. So now you can see it's, it's showing here the app shell, the header and hero section, the main content, and then it has like a left side here, like a sidebar. Uh, you can see it's a bit of a unique design so it prop it very nicely describes all of that and ultimately we're going to give this to the ai app builder all right so here it has some core instructions now actually i could ask it to give me the instructions in a prompt format but honestly i think that these lms are getting so good i think the json c description alone is actually sufficient so if we just copy this and now we go to an ai app builder i've really liked emergent they're blowing up uh, I've had a good time using them. They have a couple of different options now, also mobile apps, landing pages, but we're here just to build a full stack app. I'm gonna use the latest uh, Opus model, super good. It, it doesn't have to be the same type of project. Maybe you just like the design or the color scheme, but let's say we wanna build. So let's say I do wanna create like an AI image generator app. Let's say prompt to image that is designed like this. So I'm gonna give that JSON C data structure uh, like this. Now you can see it has some text that may not be relevant for what we're trying to build. So that's why I'm specifying it should just be designed like this and the exact text, you can deviate from the text, All right? So just super basic, we can make it more sophisticated, but honestly, I've had great results just with this. The latest models are so good. So then let's see what Emergent can do with this. We can configure other options. They allow you to connect MCP tools. You can connect your GitHub account. So there's a bunch of uh, options that I'm sure can be helpful in some uh, use cases, but just to get started, this should be good enough. Okay, get a nice sound here. So uh, what I like about Emergent is they do not just go off and you know start building it because in the beginning you're laying down the fundamentals so we have to be a little bit careful with how we're setting things up here so it actually asks you some questions which ai model do we want to use for the image generation let's do nano banana and one other thing is that we do not have to set up an api key with some external provider and then sort of set it up they have an emergent key out of the box here so we'll say emergent lm key and so we're just gonna use the credits that I have here in Emergent. So it has some core features. So you can see it already learned from the JSON that I just gave it because it's asking about the left column, that that uh, sidebar. Uh, sure, let's go ahead with both. We'll leave off the authentication. I like to focus on the actual functionality first before we wire it up with authentication and payments. Okay, so design confirmation. Okay, so it actually has a good understanding now, apparently, but let's see what it can do. Okay, so now it's gonna go off and actually try to create our app. All right, so we just have to wait a little bit and I will get back to you when it's finished. All right, so Emergent has these sub agents. So you can see they actually have a dedicated agent here for design. We can actually see that here design agent is running. We can even finish the sub agent. Um, we can actually see it's been calling some tools here, a memory tool to integrate the nano banana image. All right, so there's a reason that Emergent is blowing up. It's really good. Uh, you know, we just have to wait a few seconds on the result here. But I like that they have these dedicated agents for certain subtasks, not only for design, also for testing or like QA, they have one. So behind the scenes, they actually create design guidelines here. You can see some of the code that is generating for the app as well. Uh, we can see that later as well when it's finished, but uh, basically it's building out a plan first, both for the back end as well as for the front end. All right, so we can see something appear here. Really interesting layout here, actually. We'll see the preview in a second, but you can see it's now using the testing agent. So it's 
going to check according to the original problem statement to see if the implementation went well. All right, so I just finished up. Let's actually take a look at the preview here. So I can click here to open it up in a new tab. All right, so here we go. We now have a pretty unique layout, I would say. This is not something that you would get out of the box. It's not a perfect replication, of course, but I do get the same type of uh, vibe or feeling from the previous design. In the previous design, it wasn't taking up the full width here. So maybe we could prompt to change that, but I kind of like this as well. It has that sidebar, it has that header with like a very subtle box shadow to sort of add some depth and it has a prompt box here as well. So with this type of workflow, you can generate much more unique layouts and designs. I would say this is much better than what you would get out of the box, but let's actually see if this works. So I want to create a giraffe eating a banana. Okay, let's see if it actually works out of the box as well. So we have a nice loading state, but we do need to see an actual result as well. But just getting the UI in one go, this was so much work, uh, even, you know, even like two years ago. And here we go. Wow, it actually has created a really good uh, image here, almost indistinguishable from a real one. Um, these image models are so good as well. Uh, I can apparently save it here. I can bookmark it actually. It has actually added it to bookmarks. I can download it. Actually works in one go as well. Here we go. And I can also delete it if I want. And then here on the left side, it has go it's going to create like a, a gallery of all the ones that I've created. So this is more like a workshop area. So really good and mind blowing how easy it is to generate this. If you've been coding the past few years, you know how much work this would, this would have been to set up. Let's generate a new one here. I can also just press command enter. All right, so here we have a second one as well. And actually, if I refresh here, it is persisting these images. So I'm not losing them. And let's see if the searching works as well. So if I search for uh, giraffe, I am actually getting the image with the giraffe. So this, it has one shot of this. Yeah, I think this is just uh, amazing. But let's say you do need to be authenticated to be able to generate images, let's say. Right, so let's see how we can add authentication here as well. Can you add authentication so only logged in users can generate images, right? This, you know, in production, when you're actually going to publish it and you have some kind of AI feature, you know, that can, it can be quite costly, especially if you allow free users to generate that. So in practice, you do not see many apps that allow you to generate things with AI for free. And it's simply because of cost. So one of the first barriers that you're gonna add is simply authentication. We can save it to GitHub here. We can summarize to sort of compress the context here. We also have some other options here for ultra. So it's like a, a significant boost that you can add to the capabilities, may cost a little bit more. Okay, so actually it's gonna ask me a question here before it implements it. So what kind of approach do we want? So you can have email password login, which I do recommend because most users, most people do expect to be able to have some kind of email or password login. But if you're just you know building out the app initially, it is a bit easier to do option two here with the emergent uh, managed option. And then we'll say, gate the entire app behind login. All right, so it's finished now. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so now we have the entire app behind this login screen. Let me try to log in. I'm redirected here to an authentication page from Emergent. All right, and I have to log in. I can access this dashboard again. So now I have my account here. This was just one prompt. Of course, I had to wait a few minutes, but in the past, this would have taken multiple days depending on complexity. Uh, the other thing that I would wanna add here is uh, payments, right? So AI inference is quite costly still, especially images or videos even. So you probably want to have some kind of business model around it. So let's see how we can add Stripe payments here, because actually Emergent is really good at that as well. User has to buy at a, let's say a $9 package to generate 20 images. We'll add other plans later. So I like to scope the new features as small as possible first, and then add more complexity later on. So for now, let's just add a payment wall for $9. All right, so just finished up with the Stripe implementation. Let's check it out in, a, in the preview. All right, so now I'm logged in and I can see there are credits now. So actually I like that. I wanna have something similar actually uh, emergent where your usage is linked to the price you paid. It makes sense. It shows get credits to start. And then it shows me the $9 starter pack. All of this looks great. This is exactly what I want. Let's see if the actual uh, payment works, although it won't be an actual payment, it will be um, a fake payment. So you can see we get a checkout page here by Stripe. This is just a sandbox, so it's not a real payment. 
So what we can use here is any email, but we have, but we can use then 4242 all the way. Just use a credit card in the future. And I can just pick any location and let's go ahead and pay and see if that works. This used to be really difficult to implement, but now we have a successful payment. After one prompt, we get 20 credits. I can click on start creating. And now I have 20 credits here. I have a credit based system. So now if I say something like, beautiful house generate the image it has one credit per image let's see if all of this still works and there we go we have authentication and payments i think it's just amazing this would have taken multiple weeks uh, even a short while ago and actually i've done another video with emergent a few months back and it was really good already back then but you know sometimes i had to add another prompt to get the payments to work or authentication but now it's able to do a lot of that with just one prompt here i did not have to re-prompt to fix a mistake at all in this video now of course i would still want to verify myself that you know if the credits are zero that i'm not able to generate more images um, so there's still a bunch of checks that you want to do yourself to verify security and such. But the fact that you can build out an entire app essentially, um, and especially with this design trick, I think it's just amazing what we can do these days. The amount of software that people are going to generate is going to explode. And I think if you have a good idea, I would say check out Emergent. You can find a link in the description. And so what we can do is not only build apps landing, they have dedicated options here for landing pages and mobile apps. Um, I've had some other apps, you can deploy them. You, want, you can deploy them right here from Emergent as well. And it's actually a really easy interface to use. Of course, they have some more advanced controls if you want those. But honestly, if you just quickly want to try it out, just go ahead and start prompting. But they do have the advanced controls here as well. They also have some templates. So um, you can also set a budget here. So there's a bunch of options here to get started. But I hope now you have a better idea on, on how to vibe code beautiful applications. Give it a try. See the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.